So I'm showing you uh, multiple ways you can get clean vector line art. So if you've, if you've inked it already in Photoshop, you bring that over into Illustrator, you image trace it, you expand that image trace, like I showed in the last video, and you have a vector. This is, I'm gonna show that same thing, but this is not doing it in Photoshop, this is doing it by hand, right? So if you have inked your sketch by hand, and I just used a Sharpie on tracing vellum, then what you do is you go to a scanner, because you don't wanna just take a, a photograph of this, otherwise you'll get all those shadows and things. But you just go to a scanner, you put white behind your inked lines, that's just like turning off your sketch, and then you scan it. And I scan my line art here at uh, 600 pixels per inch. And that gives you a raster file. And I have that open. So I scanned mine, we have a scanner at the back, I can certainly help you with that. It's nothing fancy, basic stuff. And I have it, let's see, I think in our Dropbox. Yes, so that's my scanned inks. So once you have the scanned inks, I'm going to go ahead and download that. You want to clean them up or not, but you'll see how to clean them up in case that's helpful. Because we're going to take that into Illustrator and then work from there to make it a vector. Now, no matter how you get your vector line arc, you're likely going to have to adjust it within Illustrator. So for this, there's a few ways I could clean it up. The easy way is to just open it in preview or some basic image viewer and then just adjust the colors. But if I zoom in on this scan, you'll see that this is what inking looks like. It's like pools of pigment, sometimes thicker, sometimes thinner, and it's slightly bluish and even though this is tracing vellum that's really clean spun plastic, it still has like a texture to it and some variation when it's scanned, especially at this high resolution. So what do I do? I can play with auto levels. I can up. This is basically playing with levels. The brights and the darks increase the contrast. And you can still see all that color in there. So then I might want to take my saturation all the way down and clean it up. Not so much that it, it looks thicker than I want it to. But you can get some pretty, pretty clean looking lines there. Now you'll see where the ink is kind of close to itself. It's going to group together like that. Sometimes there'll be little gaps like that. But it's not dissimilar from digitally inking it in Photoshop or even just using the blob brush in Illustrator, the little variations that can happen. Once that's done, I can close that. I'm going to go ahead and download another copy of this so I can show you the full process. And I'm going to mark this one as yellow because that's this is what I call a test file. It's what I'm going to bring into Illustrator to live trace. So I've got a lot of these now. I'm going to make these icons a little bit bigger so you can see all these different versions. So I have my pencil sketch, first and foremost. I brought it into Photoshop and started inking it there. Then I turn off the sketch and just save my inking as a clean JPEG. I, bring that, I can bring that clean inking from Photoshop into Illustrator. Or I can ink it by hand, scan it, bring that into Photoshop, or just into preview, do some basic brightness contrast and I get this 
as a test image, but if I zoom in, it's clear it's not a vector, it's still pixel-based. But it's pretty clean, a lot like my digital inks. Because my digital inks out of Photoshop are also pixel-based. And so it's the difference between lines that look like this if you do them digitally versus lines that look like this if you do them by hand. And it's pretty similar. Now, either one of those you bring into Illustrator and we turn into a vector in the same way. So now I'm going to show it with my sketch, which I think is the one I'm actually going to use. So I, I right click and I'm going to say open this raster file in Illustrator. And when I do that, just to be sure I can bring it over onto the gray, and I click, I was on layers before, I click on properties and I click on image trace after I've clicked on it. And I go to black and white logo as my option. And it's going to give you this when the image is a high resolution. Okay, now I can open up these little, this little window of more specified options. And I want black and white, but I might want to play with the threshold. It's giving me a preview now of what the vectors will look like. And they look pretty darn good. Just like they did with my digital imaging or my digital inking. But because I did this by hand, it's got a little bit more of that kind of variation I like than even my digital inking had. Yes, there are things I need to correct, but I can play with all of these things until I'm happy. But the one thing I need to do in these advanced settings, and you find that advanced settings by opening up that panel here, you get this, and then clicking on advanced. You need to click on ignore white before you vectorize it. So I click on ignore white, because this is still just a preview. And once I'm happy with it, then I hit this button. This is important, expand. Otherwise, it's just a preview of a vector and not an actual vector. When I hit expand, it turns it into a vector. You see all the little blue paths around, and you see all the little anchors. If I hold down command, I can see all of them. Right? So now, I'm good to go. Now, because it's a vector, I can scale this any way I want. I'm going to bring it back onto my artboard with the large selection tool. I'm going to go ahead and make it big by holding down shift so it doesn't distort. Making it look nice on the artboard so I can make any tweaks I need to finish off my line art. And that's the goal for today is to get finished vector line art. So the first little thing I'm going to notice is that when you ink by hand, often when two lines come together, you might get a little bit of a bleed. So if I want to clean that up, I'm going to go to my, my small selection tool, my white arrow, click on it so I can see the anchors, then go to my oh-so-favorite tool, which is the pencil tool. And I can set it to the smoothness I want. And I'm just going to start on the path and end on the path and clean that up. I can use my space bar for the hand tool and kind of move around and see other places I might want to clean it up. Hold down Command to get back to that selection tool. And just clean it up. So there are benefits and there are downsides any way that you want to bring your work into Illustrator to turn into a vector. And you can always just use the blob brush directly in Illustrator to make your vector. And there's really no right or wrong way. It's just you want to end up with clean vector lines by the end. And it really depends on what kind of illustration you're doing, what the style of it is, how smooth it needs to be, how much detail it needs to retain. And then the next step will be learning how to color it. Once we save it as an EPS, just like we saved our logos. And instead of coloring it in Illustrator, which we would do if we were doing a color logo, professionally, instead of just using layer styles, we're gonna learn how to color like comic book artists do 
through digital coloring in Photoshop. Now the other tool that's really helpful is the smooth tool. Remember we added that to our paintbrush options. You do that with the three dots at the bottom of the toolbar in Illustrator. Now the smooth tool works just like the pencil tool except it will just average out curves. You just need to see the anchors and then you can smooth them. And you don't want to overuse it. It's okay to have a little bit of variation in your in your work, especially for something like a spot illustration, which is supposed to be lots of your personality. Now, what about these little gaps that sometimes happen? Right? I actually kind of like that one. But there was one up here. Uh, here's one. I can smooth out with the pencil tool. So I want you to know all the ways to get your clean vector line art. So let's see, there's a little white gap somewhere, I thought. So if not, I'll do the one in the eye. Because sometimes when we live trace, It will leave little holes where we don't want holes. How do we fill those in? We're going to use the blob brush. So between the pencil and the blob brush, you're golden. So here, if I want this gap opened, what can I do? I can actually use the eraser here and open it up so that I have anchor points to draw with, with the pencil. Then I can open that part up. And it's smoothing it for me as I go. Remember, every line has an inside and an outside. So if you smooth one side, you might need to smooth the other. Sometimes you need the pencil tool for that. Sometimes you can use the smooth tool for that. outside and the inside. Oh, you got to start on the path and end on the path. Start on the path to be sure it's good to start through an anchor point and end through an anchor point. Now, because I live traced this and I didn't mess too much with the settings, you see how all the corners are kind of rounded. So if I really want sharp corners, that's something I can adjust in the settings before I expand it as I live trace, or I can do them individually here and kind of sharpen these corners. So yeah, it's looking better. Okay, so there's a little hole there. If I want to fill that hole, I can use the blob brush. Remember the blob brush, you can double click, you can set to a smoothness, you can set it to a size, you can even set it to a pressure if you're given that option with the tools. And then you just paint in and it will merge it automatically with what's there before. If I want to connect these two lines, I can just use the blob brush and it will connect them. And then, of course, I can use the pencil to clean it up. So I think I wanted that opening there so I can show you something in coloring. All right. Now, this is an illustration, not a professional logo. But anything you do in the vector line art is going to be there in the final coloring. So kind of really look it over. I don't I